So I can invite you to, uh, uh, to, to make a response to this from a performance point of view. So I suppose um, before I do that, that my, my, my responses are very much coming from uh, my field, if you like, uh, which is essentially as a, as a theatre director who's moved into education and who's now very much uh, responsible for the overview of various programmes in terms of training people for performance. So I suppose the umbrella uh, concern, for me, the umbrella interest for me is that under all of that, we're a storyteller. Whether we're an actor, a director, uh, a writer, we're, we're, we're telling stories. There is a field of, uh, uh, of applied performance which is a very rich uh, field, but it's an emerging field. I, I'm, I don't know enough about that to respond to that, but uh, academically I would say that there is a, that there, they're starting to get courses across the field of performance in, in essentially what's called applied performance. And I think a lot of, and a lot of what's been talked about this morning relates to that field of how you can apply uh, performance techniques uh, uh, training of actors, etc., to uh, uh, to various situations. I would imagine restorative justice is one, management training is another, role play, etc., etc., goes into all sorts of different different fields. Responses, really. I think one of my first th things responses is interestingly enough, in the field of performance, we actually don't talk about empathy that much. Funnily enough. Um, I guess because that that's something that we either take for granted or that we know that kind of happens. What we have done historically, of course, is that we, uh, in performance, we talk about catharsis uh, and, you know, and the whole cathartic uh, effect of coming from Aristotle, evoking pity and terror, uh, extreme, I suppose that in some kind of ways, an extreme form of empathy in, 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 in classical Greek uh, theatre and tragedy, of having such a strong. Uh, 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 empathetic response that it actually becomes completely cathartic. Interestingly, that this has been uh, uh, this cathartic effect has been challenged by uh, lots of theatre practitioners, uh, and it was challenged, I think, probably most uh, uh, most radically by the work of Bertolt Brecht and then the work of uh, Augusto Boal. And one of the essential challenges to sort of what catharsis is doing is who's having the cathartic experience. And if you have a cathartic experience, does it lead to action? In other words, you just, does the audience just have a good cry uh, and then go home and say, well, you know, there we are, we're all purged of emotion, but we're not going to change the world. So I suppose that really, essentially, you know, at some kind of a, a response that seeks to change <coughs> the world, uh, 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 very much a, a Marxist response going into uh, uh, a response from Brecht and into a loss of the is how can we use these techniques to elicit change? And that's when you get to uh, a, a big movement in the, in, in, in the theatre world, which is, begins to break down the barriers of who's the actor and who's the spectator. Uh, and so I think a lot of the things that we talked about this morning recognise that actually if we were to use theatre and theatre techniques and role play, uh, that we'd have to be very, very clear about who is uh, who is the actor and who is the spectator. And sometimes, that actually, in a lot of what's been said this morning, of course, is that both people are being asked to be put into both situations. Uh, that you are the actor, uh, that, you are, uh, that you are also the audience. So uh, that, that awareness, if you like, of when you're the actor, when you're the audience, or if you're both, seems to be a, a reflection of a lot of thinking in terms of uh, performance techniques uh, in, that have gone into education and have gone into, into schools, uh, and, and a lot of these techniques, I'm sure, have gone into restorative justice. So I suppose a, 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 a response would be, what is cathartic and what is empathy? And when is catharsis, catharsis useful, or when is it actually just not necessarily provoke the action? <coughs> Talk a little bit about the, uh, about the response. My, part of my response, I think, is, is rooted in the, 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 the training of actors because I think there might be something kind of useful in here. Uh, yeah, uh, but when, when an actor approaches a role, they, they, they don't think of anything. 
But one of the things that they absolutely learn to do, uh, and crucial, and the word has come up a lot this morning, is not to judge the character. So they are, you know, they have to put themselves into another person's shoes in a non-judgmental way. And actually, despite what a lot of people think about the, you know, the work of Stan Slavsky and identification of putting yourself into the shoes, that most of the work actually is related to what I would call an action analysis of the drama, the event. So most of what an actor, the young actor does is, um, interestingly, it comes back to Peter's five points. What's the story? Tell the story. What is the story? What happens? So if you're looking at the text, your first question is, you know, what, what happens? What's the action? Not the feelings, not the empathy. What happens? And most of an actor's work uh, is about, uh, is about analysing the actions in terms of a system of, uh, of objectives, wants, needs. You come to this very end thing, what are my needs? So most of the, what a, 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 an actor does is to look at a, a character or a piece of action and to say, well, what, what does that character want? And from there, you build up an action analysis of your scene, your event, you like your, could be your crime, your action, your story, whatever it is. And you start to build up a, 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 a whole series of discussions as to what do I want, um, how am I going to get it, how, and how am I going to get it, what are, my, what are my tactics to get to it, what's my big, big want in life, in character, what does Hamlet really want, what does he get, and what does he want from this thing, and what are the options. Related to that is uh, very much is then looking at the obstacles and saying, well, what are these obstacles? So the obstacles are sometimes external, the obstacles are, 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 are sometimes in other people, but also the obstacles are sometimes in yourself. And I've heard quite a lot this morning related to that of what are the obstacles that, you, that people have inside themselves, what are the things that they have to overcome, and what are the, what are the obstacles outside of them. So this system of, of, of analysing an action in terms of uh, 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 objectives, wants, needs, tactics and problems uh, has a lot of resonance uh, of course and it's a fundamental part of theory that, that goes into all sorts of things. You can see how that goes into role play management training and I'm sure it goes into, into, into historical justice. Interestingly about that, I think that, uh, that, uh, that what there is an assumption, probably unspoken in terms of theatre training, that actually if we can get into the motives, the actions, the why, and explain them, uh, that, we, uh, that we are a long, 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 long way to, uh, to creating character. So an actor often thinks, well, if I can understand uh, that the actions of that person, uh, then, I can, uh, then I can get a long way to creating a character. So this is an idea of actually the character in, in, in a history is largely formed by actions, which I think is interesting because it takes us away from it takes us away from this I'm inherently good, I'm inherently bad. Uh, I, you know, it takes you away from this judgment of a character, uh, and obviously I'm using character in terms of fictional character as well as a person to say that actually that um, that, that action is the predominant driver of the character. I'm not inherently, um, uh, I'm not a, a criminal uh, until I perform an action. I'm not inherently good or bad. Um, so the action analysis uh, uh, in, in theatre seems to me to sort of uh, um, uh, to be quite relevant in terms of this field. And I mean, we can go into you know, more details of this. Um, very interesting, of course, because this responds to, to some of the question that uh, all conflict is caused by lack of empathy. Well, in terms of the theatre world, we'll say, we'd probably say, no, all conflict is, is actually caused by conflicting objectives. I want this, you want that. Uh, and obviously part of what we are doing is to uh, try to identify this conflict, uh, and then the drama resolves the conflict. So you've got this... So you've got a pattern of analysis, really, which is very similar to yours, but slightly back to front. So to come to your tree, we're really all interested in all this base stuff. 
when you, you know, when you started to say, you know, upbringing this, why? I mean, all these motives are in the bottom of the tree, and that's the thing that the, that the world of performance or the world of the actor uh, is, is uh, particularly interested in. Um, we problematize. Um, sometimes we don't understand the story. Uh, and our way of understanding the story in the films is in the, uh, in the performance world, in terms of the fiction, is to constantly ask ourselves, what's the problem? You know, what's the problem? What is the, what is the problem? Is the problem me? Is the problem outside? Of course, often it's a multiplicity of problems. So this, this question, this constant question of what is the problem that drives uh, the action, obviously relates very much to what is the motives uh, that drive the action. I'm not sure what the theory is. 87% of communication is non-verbal, I think, mm. probably. It's very interesting uh, for me this because this, some of this, uh, some of this chimes very much, uh, very much on the ground. But I'm sure that uh, that, uh, that Pete's talked about is about how you gauge things, how you judge things. There's an awful lot of work being done, particularly in terms of the acting for camera world. Uh, which I think is very interesting because if you read any book on acting for camera, and there are an increasing number from the British perspective more and more, but whatever perspective they come from, the key thing that they all talk about how you become a good actor on camera is your ability to listen. And this is obviously related to the, sort of the dynamics of filmmaking, and we've seen it all, we, we've grown up with that grammar, haven't we? You know, Here's someone says something contentious, violent, disagreeable, but we want the cut to the reaction, you know, and the cut to the reaction shot of how do I feel about what's being said to me is, is, is absolutely part of the DNA of, you know, of, of understanding acting for camera. There's a lot of interesting uh, techniques and, and things that are being developed in terms of that, in terms of developing listening skills. Um, and those listening skills are um, they're probably best explained by I think it's this sort of Chinese hexagram that describes it, which is which is that there's the ear part, but then there's also the soul, the spirit, the person, all the the, the, the way that you listen, uh, uh, not just through your ears. I and mean, total listening, you know, active listening is what we would describe it in terms of the camera. So it seems to me that it's a very interesting and and and, 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 all, and a lot of resonance when you talk about Skype. I think that's very interesting about doing things in Skype. What does that do in terms of putting yourself in the position, possibly in the close-up? You know, because for me as a sort of a practitioner, I think well that's really really interesting. You know, to get people in, in close-up because you might not be able to get that. You might not be able to get that distance in real life. But one of the first, you know, one of the first things you do when you're training actors in terms of the screen is you start to do this to them. <laughs> you know, because of course that's the ability of scrutiny that you have on a big cinema screen in a, in, in a close-up. So this idea of actually being able to read the face, read things in minute detail is, is, is um, very interesting and uh, possibly difficult to this field in, in, through sort of technologies, which is which is which really sort of interested me. Um, Going out in the streets, just picking up on this, this is interesting. Going out in the street, that's a technique for training actors as well. Getting character and go out on the street. Uh, um, it's, it's not difficult to do. Um, but what's very, very interesting about that is that, is, is that I think that, uh, that Lorraine touched on is this, is this business of, of, of the outside world and the view of people as a technique for actors that when they come when they do it, when they come back, most of what we talk about is I was amazed how people treated me. You know, from my perspective, I'm, a, I, you know, I'm wrapped up, I'm in a hoodie, I'm completely covered, but from my perspective, you know what, I just feel warm. You know, from their perspective, it's all, oh, here comes a threatening person, here comes pers a person, you know, that, 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 you know, that I, I don't know about or feels menacing. From, from my perspective, all I'm doing is feeling warm and comfortable in the street. Um, uh, obviously, you know, once you start to get into professions, this is amazingly you know, revelatory. I mean, I have worked with actors that have got, gone out in the streets as a, as a nun and been absolutely staggered <laughs> at, 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 you know, at, the, at the response that they get from the public, just even walking around the street for an hour. Um, I think there's a 
lot of uh, uh, um, uh, there's a lot <coughs> of work um, uh, being done in theatre companies. Uh, well, East yeah. Theatre is, is one, but there are also theatre companies that engage with this work that, I'm, that, that, that some of you might have heard of. Uh, Carpool Citizens is is is, is one, um, but there are many uh, uh, that use some of these uh, uh, techniques, and I think that probably in terms of this, we, we need to look at more carefully at some of those um, uh, at some of those theatre companies and, and, and what they're actually uh, and what they're actually doing, because I think that in here we've got a lot of ideas that, uh, that, that can be taken further and developed in this field. Um, obviously, to list a few, we've got role play, um, uh, and we've certainly got this idea of pushing yourself in other people's shoes, even temporarily. Uh, related to that, <coughs> probably is this emotion that's come up about this morning, about the voice, the story. So there's a very big tradition in debating theatre that might, that might be interesting to uh, 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 to explore and to use in terms of taking that story, but sometimes maybe taking the story but not necessarily putting it into the person's words straight away, that might be premature, but actually trying to get, um, uh, perhaps using performers to, 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 to initially to tell someone else's story at the early stages, it might be very interesting before that, that, you, can, uh, uh, that you can put these, um, these two people together. Um, I suppose. Um, um, lots of other thoughts that spark there by some of the things you said. Um, uh, <coughs> I'm quite fascinated by this, this, this lack of negative words as well, which is a thing that in the terms of training and performance as well, that we, we, we try constantly to avoid. It's related to this business of not, to, uh, of not judging, not having negative words. Um, there's also a technique in performance in terms of analysing character where you often talk about Outers and inners, which is a, which is a very which relates to a lot of what uh, a lot of these things have been talking about this morning. Is that is that sometimes if you're getting behaviour, sometimes a, a, a character is revealing something, but actually you know it's only on an outer. And a lot of the actors' work is in a sense is to try to do a bit of a map uh, in terms of the character to say what's the inner characteristic and what's the outer characteristic. We all know this from life. You know, we've all seen people actually who we think are deeply insecure on the inner uh, uh, and on the outer are, 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 are arrogant or, 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 or defensive or whatever. Um, as a technique for, 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 for working with, with, with actors, that's obviously sort of, you know, that's obviously applicable in real life. So obviously, I suppose to sum up really, there's a lot of you know, there's a, a, a lot of areas of performance that obviously uh, that, that relates to this. I think it's very much you know an emerging thing, uh, characterised possibly by the, you know by the real beginning of this of the, the emergence of the of, of growing forces in applied performance that can actually look at these ideas, develop these ideas within an educational uh, within an educational context. Thank you.